You know the sight and the sound, the heavy sigh of a sleek steam engine coming to rest at a station in an old film. And you might wonder what the connection could be from that vintage technology to today's war in Ukraine. The belching fiery plants of these behemoths are fired by coal, and the price has skyrocketed since Russia's invasion. In turn, that is jeopardizing the future of some of Britain's living and breathing museums, the country's heritage railway lines powered by coal, fire, and steam. From southwestern England, special correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports. They're burning through money at the Swanage Railway, as is every historic line in the land that gave birth to steam trains. The locomotive hauling today's service is a 1940s vintage express, back to robust health after a $400,000 refit. In total, there are 150 heritage railway lines in Britain, and all of them are facing the same problems. This is the start of the new season, and they're all banking on good visitor numbers to help them survive. We've had to work very hard to address the impact of the pandemic, and coming out of that, we've still got major challenges ahead of us. Leading the effort to keep this living museum on the right track is Gavin Johns, who has more than 30 years' experience with Britain's modern rail network. We've got two challenges. One, rising costs, and the impacts of those rising costs on our customers. So our own costs are going up significantly, most notably coal. Three years ago, the daily spend on coal was $670. Today, it's $1,600. Coal is a major issue for us because before the war in Ukraine, we were sourcing our coal from Russia. So we very quickly had to work with our supplier to switch the source of the coal. Can you ever go back to Russian coal? I think it's very unlikely that we will go back to Russian coal supplies. We've been working hard to find new sources. And I think for the time being that we'll stick with those sources. John says that ethical considerations, and not just sanctions, dictate the railway's stance. Although costs have more than doubled, it'll try to absorb the hit and not raise ticket prices, because visitors are also struggling financially. The hope is that more passengers, like Matt Collins, will turn up for a steam fix. Marvel of what steam engines were at the time, basically these controlled explosions, a real lesson in engineering, and it's really evocative, the smells and the sights and the sounds uh, as you travel on these trains, and it just gives you an insight into what the Victorians did for us. While steam engines have always pumped out carbon dioxide along with water vapour, the biggest environmental impact of the locomotive age was to encourage air pollution by other heavy industries. Today, the influence of heritage lines on climate change is negligible. The railways insist they're using cleaner coal where possible and are trying to reduce their carbon footprint elsewhere. In Swanage, aficionados like Suzanne Wiseman have no qualms about keeping steam alive. It means a lot to me because I was brought up in the steam railway era and we were just saying actually, remember standing on the railway bridges watching them go under and the driver used to always give us a peep and wave. And it's just nice, it's keeping a bit of the British heritage going. I think people all over the world love us for our history and this is a big part of it. This heritage line benefits from being in a region that's popular with vacationers and day trippers. Nevertheless, it's laid off a handful of permanent staff. Other railways have been harder hit and have been forced to make more drastic cuts. Railways have been using timber, steel for all the repairs, track renewals, locomotive and carriage renewals and so on. So the cost of these sorts of commodities have all shot up. So, yeah, there are some railways at risk, uh, absolutely. As chief executive of the Heritage Railway Association, Steve Oates has an overview of the sector's myriad problems. So how would you categorise it? It's tough. It's looking tricky because the economic challenges that everybody is facing and the cost of living crisis, which is affecting potential visitors, it's almost like a double or triple whammy. Third-class travel is a concept that many British people can now grasp as their living standards decline and they cut back on luxuries but Oates hopes that the allure of steam will prevail. I think people will reluctantly put hands in pockets as they did during COVID, but it is a risk. There is no question about it. There, there is a risk, and railways do need to be really careful about this. Even the popular Bluebell line, 130 miles east of Swanage, is not immune. It relies on volunteers like Patricia Beale, 
who spent a lifetime working on modern railways. Something that gets in your blood. I mean, I love railways and steam engines, the smell and the, just the general ambience. Um, steam engines are living creatures, or they appear to be living creatures. They breathe. Love and tender care have helped this terrier-class locomotive survive its contemporaries. Now, 150 years old, this is the little engine that could help pull the bluebell over the economic mountain. The railway's chairman is Paul Churchman. Morning, everything OK? Yes. Ready for a busy day? Hopefully, yes. Good. The weather's not looking too bad at the minute. No, hopefully we should have enough people in today. We're working very hard, but we have to be realistic in that it's going to be very challenging. The Bluebell's costs have also doubled because of the war in Ukraine, even though this coal doesn't come from Russia. Last year wasn't that good because of the rising costs and the softening of revenue. We expect to post a loss for last year. This year, we probably will post a, a, a loss again, but we are taking actions to, to get our business to break even for 2024. The Bluebell and other lines can no longer rely on pure nostalgia as a crowd puller. They need to wrench young people away from the screens of their devices. 19-year-old Luke Hopgood no longer volunteers, but keeps coming back. And there's just old-fashioned uh, stations, and it's just very traditional, and it's just a very authentic feel about it. This station is a favourite with film producers. It featured in the Downton Abbey series, but the Bluebell can't rest on its laurels. People don't want to just come for a train ride anymore. It needs to be so much more than that. You need to have the added value to, to the day out and the visitor experience. We've got a Sting Gala coming up in a few weeks with some great engines coming, which we know will attract enthusiasts. The Swanage line was axed from the British network in 1972. And Gavin Johns has no intention of letting it die a second time. We've got a great set of volunteers who help the railway out. We've got a great set of staff that work really hard to keep things moving. And I think that with our special events and with the determination, then we've got a really good chance of surviving. This summer, in a new initiative, this heritage diesel train will connect to mainline services for the first time in 50 years. The message from all 150 historic railways is the same. Come here, spend your money. <laughs> Help us survive. Enjoy the experience we have. It is unique. Can they make it? They think they can. They think they can. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Southern England.